Hello there, my name is Ismos and uh, this is part two of our 2012 earthquake scene in Blender, making that scene in Blender. And uh, yes, yeah, so this is part two and uh, we, we were left off with this here. You can see we have already started on the deformation of uh, the ground and now what we are left with is uh, yeah, this top layer uh, of uh, these bricks here. Let's see. Yeah, so let's work on those and uh, again we can yes uh, as i said before uh this if you want to watch the entire time lapse of uh, everything because i won't be doing everything in this scene include mostly the materials i won't be touching anything uh, like that I'll, you can just go watch uh the time lapse on my second channel uh blender money uh, this channel here you can see uh, the time lapse is already up there but uh yeah let's get on uh, with uh with the top player so i'll just add a mesh we just want to create a repeatable pattern using the array system to kind of replicate uh these pavement uh, layers so let's uh, do this we remove this keyframe i'm just going to scale this i think it's 45 Get this 45 like this and do another rotate it 90 move it around there and now uh, you can now add an array and add another and then add an empty to control the second array uh, because we want to place uh, the second array here so we just cop pick this object rotation. Make sure you apply the scale of the object and uh, move the empty to the location of uh, the of the object. And now we can place them using the array. A kind of keyframe recording. And uh, now we can use the second array, the first array to place first one and see if that's right let's see let's see what do we have here and paste that there and copy this After you've done that, you just increase uh, the count. And reason for the top one like this. Okay, so that should work and uh, then you can add in a solidify modifier to give these some thickness so I think something like that is enough you don't want them to intersect with the ground you just want them to be placed on top of it so move this just like that and uh, now you can apply the array and the solidify modifier but we don't need this anymore uh, just to make this interesting i'm just going to add a material to them so let me go to look dev again you can watch the how i made the materials uh, from the time lapse i'll be leaving a link a link in the description i won't waste your time by showing you how i did the materials so i'll just copy one of the bricks here <coughs> paste it in this scene uh, what did i paste 
font the brick. So it will come with the material. So I can just select this and link the materials of, what did I link? Control L, link materials to have the materials transferred to this object. And uh, the, the next thing I can do is also copy the material for this object here. So let me just add a sphere. Link, link the materials, control L, materials, then copy this object, paste it in this scene. And I can select these link materials. The scale is a bit off, but uh, that's okay. Again, this should also have the same material. Let's see. Yeah, I think that's good enough. Second layer is good. And uh, we need to apply to make these individual objects uh, so that we get uh, that random, those random colors uh, that are powered by uh, the random input. Uh, so random object input. So to separate them, you just uh, also make sure that uh, they, are, they are given their own layer. So I'll call them store player. Okay, then go to edit mode, hit P to separate by loose parts. You can see what we have. Now, what we're going to do is uh, when you separate objects by loose parts or when you separate objects or meshes, uh, they will have the NVIDIA origin, their origin to the original object so you want to hit you, you want to right click and set the origin to geometry to reset the origin to each individual object like this and if you play back i think this had a keyframe so yeah so let's delete that keyframe okay okay Delete keyframes. Tab into edit mode. Make sure you don't have you don't have any keyframes here. Oh no. Okay, let me see. Let's try applying scale. So for some reason, uh, this uh, this uh, keyframe is still sticking around. So let me delete that and then Control L, link animation data so that we don't have any keyframes. Okay. Okay, now we just need to make each of these objects, a rigid, turn them into a rigid body object. So just go, make sure they ha they're all selected. Rigid body, active. That should make them a rigid body object and uh, they should just fall to uh, the ground. Uh, as you can see. Now, we also need to make this layer a rigid body passive, rigid body passive. So let me first turn off the ground, uh, sorry, the top layer, so that I can work on the ground layer. I'll give them a rigid body passive and uh, make sure that uh, they are set, they have the animated setting turned on. Now, if I unhide uh, this top layer, playback, They're just falling off for some reason, so let's see what's going on. You know, I think this project is also slowing me down a bit, so let me first close it for a second. Thing because I undoed uh, the project a few times, uh, the origin will still reset uh, to uh, the original origin for each object. So I'll just select everything again. Uh, and this is a good reason why I set everything into a layer so that they can be is 
uh, into a collection so that they are easily selected. So you just have to select one object, Shift G, and then select the collection. I want the top layer collection and reset uh, the origin. Now if I play back, I can see they just fall on the ground. I can see some of them are falling off on this side. So what I'm going to do is select uh, this layer, this object here. I go to uh, where we have the vertex groups and go to the basis or which is the main or original uh, shape of the mesh and uh, select this side. Because if you edit this in this key, uh, shape key, I will just add an, an, another animation to it instead of so let's just edit the basis of the first shape key so that uh, that shape is added to the original shape. I don't want this, any of these pieces to follow, so this, that's why I'm adding this. Expanding this. Uh, again, you can see what I've just done here. I, edit, I edited this in the key one. And that's why you see when we go back to edit mode, it will revert to the original basis that doesn't have that extension. So you need to go to the basis and uh, edit that instead of, yeah, so you can see now, yeah, we still have the other sides falling off. So let's also fix that. You can just select both meshes and make sure that uh, you have basis selected and we just get these, push them off a bit like that, select these, push them like that. Now let me change this because it's also taking up a lot of CPU power. So uh, everything is working except uh, that uh, when the deformation is happening, uh, it does, the simulation doesn't consider it. So to make it consider it, we need to select uh, those meshes and go under uh, the physics tab, turn on, change the sh collision shape to mesh, and uh, turn on uh, deforming. Before uh, do the same for all the other meshes. And uh, this middle one as well. Now, if we play back, can see how the pavements are starting to break up around our fault line. You can see and uh, if you want you can increase uh, the friction of these surfaces by just a bit so that uh, these big uh, blocks uh, don't uh, kind of slide off the surface that easily. So this playback. You can see how the fault line starts appearing. And uh, everything starts falling in. You can see how the, deform the deformation is breaking up this area. And I uh, would ex expect uh, the earth to deform as it's cracking. So, yeah, it adds some realism. So, let's preview this in camera. Maybe turn on materials. You can see. how that looks. Yeah, so in the next part, uh, let's see what should we do. I can't find my original version. So in the next part, we can add cars and uh, maybe some dust. And maybe you can even make this part kind of fall to this side. So yeah, let's see how that 